Hello everyone. A while ago a friend and I jokingly wondered when the last living member of the Flat Earth Society would finally die. So I was quite surprised to find that there is actually a rather large number of people who seem to be sincere in their belief that Earth is indeed flat. They keep repeating so-called proofs that can be easily refuted by observation and experiment. My goal in making this video cannot reasonably be to convince any of these people of the opposite, but I thought it might be a good idea to show some people who are interested some of the evidence we actually have for a spherical Earth that is inconsistent with a flat Earth, and how and why all of the so-called proofs for a flat Earth really amount to nothing at all. Some are outright lies, many just refute straw men or affirm the consequent, but the majority are just arguments from incredulity and arguments from ignorance. This is the start of a series of videos for a claim-by-claim -claim refutation of Eric Dubay's video 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball video book, linked in the description. The contents of that video are also available for download as a PDF, but I won't link to it since the video is a verbatim reading of the book. I may, however, on one or two occasions use a picture from the PDF that is not in the video to make a point. So let's get started. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay Actually, it is neither 200 different points, they are mostly repetitions, nor is any of them a proof. They are not even evidence. I will play a portion of the original video so no one can say I am misrepresenting what he said, followed by my extensive comments. Sometimes a bit of math is unavoidable to show how the arguments for a spherical Earth follow from repeatable observations and equations anyone can derive and validate. I will occasionally refer to material by others who are more qualified or have made a more eloquent argument than I could hope to present. 1. The horizon always appears perfectly flat 360 degrees around the observer regardless of altitude. This is simply false. It seems to originate from the casual observation that from ground level the horizon appears perfectly flat and no curvature can be seen with the unaided eye, even from most mountains and with high resolution digital cameras. Without a level it will also be almost impossible to detect the amount by which one would need to look down from eye level. Let's take a look at what kind of horizon we would expect to see from a ground based observer. Martimer81 has done the math, so a big shout out to him. He's somewhat more proficient in this stuff than I am, but it's really just basic trigonometry and not that hard to follow. It would have taken me just a bit longer to arrive at the same results. I'll link to the video below. He calculates that on an Earth with a radius of roughly 6400 kilometers, we can expect the horizon to be 0.045 degrees below eye level when the observer is 2 meters above an unobstructed surface, that is, one without buildings or any terrain features. The horizon line will curve downwards towards the edges of a camera frame with a horizontal field of view of 118 degrees to 0.088 degrees. On a typical action camera at a 1080p resolution that would be less than one pixel and thus barely noticeable. The reason some experiments found the Earth to be optically completely flat is due to refraction in the atmosphere. When traveling from an optically less dense medium to a denser medium, light is deflected towards the denser medium. This is caused by a lower speed of light in the denser medium and follows directly when describing light as composed from individual spherical waves according to the Hörchen's Fresnel principle. Since air is compressible and pushed down by the air above it, it is denser near the ground, so light is bent downwards to make the Earth appear somewhat flatter than it actually is. This may be compounded by an inversion layer with colder and thus even denser air close to the ground. In this case the Earth may actually appear almost or completely flat. We'll come back to that later. All amateur balloon, rocket, plane and drone footage show a completely flat horizon over 20 plus miles high. Let's look at what we would expect to see from higher altitudes. Would we really see something that looked like a ball from more than 30 kilometers up? If we rise high above the surface, such as high-flying airplanes and weather observation balloons regularly do, we'd expect to see the horizon line drop below eye level and also to observe a visible curvature. The effect is small from normal airliners cruising at 13,000 meters, where, according to the calculations before, 
and also assuming the same 118 degree field of view action camera, we would expect a drop of the horizon of 3.7 degrees in the center and a further drop of around 3.5 degrees towards the edges, a minimally observable curvature. Near the maximum cruising altitude of Concorde, at about 20,000 meters, these numbers increase to a downward angle of around 4.5 degrees in the center and another 4.2 degrees lower at the left and right edges. At typical altitudes of stratospheric weather observation balloons of 30,500 meters, or about 100,000 feet, the horizon will be down by a barely noticeable 5.6 degrees, arcing down towards the edges to 10.8 degrees, a drop of around 5.2 degrees. So, can we see this curvature in aerial footage? Flatliners always claim one of two things. Either that the footage is computer generated by any agency in on the conspiracy, or that any visible curvature was caused by lens distortion. The former is just an assertion, so let's not worry about it. The latter is a real issue, but it's not insurmountable. All lenses, except some very special anamorphic cinema lenses, have the property that every straight line which passes through the frame center is perfectly straight. On the lenses which are typical on modern action cameras, all lines are curved towards the nearest edges. This is known as barrel distortion. Fisheye lenses have a very strong barrel distortion, but even those will project straight lines going through the center as straight lines. So in order to give the camera the benefit of the doubt, we will look at some footage where the middle of the horizon line is as close to the center of the frame as possible, or even slightly below so that any possible visible curvature would be reduced rather than exaggerated by the lens. If we could still find an upward bulging curvature, then we would clearly be looking at the curvature of the natural horizon, which is a strong indication of the spherical nature of the Earth. I found unedited footage of several balloon launches, plus one amateur rocket launch, so unless we can see clear evidence of a transition from the real launch footage to the alleged CGI, we will assume it is real, untempered footage from high altitude. Let's first use Dog Cam flies to the edge of space, 110,000 feet on a balloon, mainly because it is footage used by Eric Dubay himself in his 200 Proofs book. The problem with this is that it is edited and thus does not fulfill the second criterion of showing raw continuous footage from start to the highest point, so we will repeat the exercise with a second video later. But first, dog cam. By the way, the PDF version shows a dishonest picture of the dog cam. It is squashed vertically, thereby compressing any possibly visible curvature below detectable levels, and secondly, it is labeled over 20 miles high whereas the screenshot is from a time in the video where the video's own caption says 23,800 meters, which is less than 15 miles. In this screen capture, which is contrast enhanced to give a clearer definition to the edge of the Earth, we can see that the horizon does actually drop away towards the edges. Although this camera does not seem to have bad distortion, I still selected a frame where the horizon line is below the center of the frame, indicated by the green line, so that any possible barrel distortion would reduce the visible curvature, so the measurement is conservative. Here's a screen capture of another high-altitude research balloon video, which contains the complete uncut ascent. If you have too much time on your hands, you can watch the entire video and satisfy yourself that it is not edited and there is no other trickery involved. Again, I have selected a frame where the horizon is very close to the center of the frame, because in this case, the lens has a clearly visible barrel distortion. But this video offers another great opportunity. It contains the moon near the center of the frame, so it is only slightly distorted. We know the moon has an apparent diameter of around half a degree, and it is about 8 pixels in diameter in this frame. The frame is 1920 pixels wide, which corresponds to a field of view of around 120 degrees. The drop of the visible ends of the horizon curve is just under 50 pixels, so around 3 degrees. Even at 30,500 meters, as was claimed in the video description, this seems a bit less than expected, but nonetheless it is clearly visible. 
If you don't have the time to watch several hours of a balloon ascent, there's the high performance alternative of amateur rockets. The best of the lot is called the Go Fast launch and reached just over 117 kilometers of altitude. Above 100 kilometers is often, though rather arbitrarily, referred to as space. Airplanes don't fly there anymore. Technically, it is called the thermosphere. There is still some gas there, enough to make satellites at these altitudes fall from the sky after a few weeks. So here are two screenshots from the onboard camera of the 2014 GoFast launch. Again, I selected frames where the horizon line is near the center of the frame. I rotated them around the center so they appear similar to the other ones. I don't know how far from Apogee the picture actually was, so I'll assume it was somewhere around 100 kilometers high. Here we would expect the horizon to have dropped to around 10 degrees. To figure out the expected drop at the edges, we need the camera angle of view. And again we are lucky to have the moon in shot. It measures around 22 pixels in diameter. Since this is around half a degree, the total frame of 1920 pixels would be roughly 44 degrees. For these values, we would expect the edges of the horizon curve to be around 0.8 degrees lower than the middle. This doesn't seem to be a lot, but with the moon being 22 pixels wide for half a degree, 44 pixels equals 1 degree, so we would expect the edges to be around 35 pixels lower than the center. And if we measure the photo, this is roughly what we find. It is not precise enough to arrive at an exact value or even a good estimate of the Earth's actual radius, but it is a good indication that we can't be too far off. Only NASA and other government space agencies show curvature in their fake CGI photos and videos. So, sorry, all the footage I used to actually show a curvature was not from NASA or any other space agency, Russian, European, Chinese or otherwise. But for all who have been waiting patiently, here's some well-deserved beautiful footage shot from the International Space Station. But the amateur footage observations fit nicely with a spherical Earth model. We don't need NASA to tell us anything, when we can just look ourselves. Launching a weather balloon is cheap, and so are cameras, almost anyone can do it. And removing the lens distortion is also not too hard. Of course, this is not proof but it constitutes evidence. It is the result of an observation which could have disproved the theory, but did not. Clearly defined ways to disprove a model are a hallmark of a scientific theory. Going to high altitude and measuring the curvature of the horizon line had the possibility of showing a totally flat horizon, which would have been incompatible with a spherical Earth. But it did show a curvature consistent with that model and consistent with the assumed radius of the Earth. As to a flat Earth, there isn't even a theory which explains what the horizon should look like from higher altitudes, such as how far away should we be able to see, at what angle should the horizon be, what curvature, if any, would we be able to see, etc. In other words, the flat Earth horizon model is not falsifiable and therefore not a useful scientific theory. Proponents of a flat Earth will say, we see no curvature, therefore the Earth is flat. But ask them what exactly they'd expect to see instead, and they will always sidetrack the conversation without giving a clear answer. The reason is simple. If they could come up with a verifiable and falsifiable answer, they could easily be proven wrong, so they'll avoid that at all costs. Two. The horizon always rises to the eye level of the observer as altitude is gained, so you never have to look down to see it. If Earth were in fact a globe, no matter how large, as you ascended, the horizon would stay fixed and the observer would have to tilt looking down further and further to see it. Yes, we would have to look down further with increasing altitude, but the angle is negligible from eye height at sea level, and even from Mount Everest it cannot be more than 3 degrees. As with the curvature, flat earthers do not really say where the horizon should be. And if it stayed at eye level, even a flat disk model would run into problems. But that's for another video. So, thanks for watching. I will continue this series whenever time allows. But if the first two out of 200 points have taken me 15 minutes, 
it's going to take a while to work through this. Please point out any errors or omissions, or just leave any other comment you like. If you like this, subscribe and spread the word. This video is licensed under Creative Commons license, attribution, non-commercial, share alike, 4.0 international.